everyone, it's Diabetic Danica, and we all know what season it is right now. Summer? No, back to school! It is technically still summer, but I hear that a lot of you guys are going back to school, and while I'm no longer in school, I thought I could just talk about my experiences having type 1 diabetes and going to school. And this is by no means going to be a totally inclusive video of everything you should know for every stage of school in your life. This is just going to be kind of like what I did in elementary, middle, and high school, not so much college. I want to do a whole separate video on that. So I guess I'll just start at the beginning. When I was first diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and I was going back to school, I was in sixth grade and I had already had like a couple weeks of school. I can't remember the exact amount, but I had a couple weeks of school already under my belt and when I was going back, my mom actually came with me for the first couple days just to make sure that I eased back in to school and made sure that I was taken care of. Because when I was first diagnosed, um, some of you probably know that I was severely scared of needles and so I wasn't giving any of my own shots. Um, I don't know if I was even checking my blood sugar myself at this point. So my mom was doing all of this for me and I was on NPH and Humalog. So this meant that I actually didn't have to take a shot for lunch at all, but I still had to check my blood sugar obviously. So my mom came with me those first couple of days um, just to make sure that I was okay. And then from there on out, what I did was, I don't know if it's unique to my situation or if it's what most people do, but I went to small Christian private schools all growing up until college. And so that meant that the budget was kind of low. I guess all school budgets are low, but we didn't have a school nurse. That wasn't part of my school experience growing up at all. I have never had a school nurse. so. Our like home base for all of my diabetes supplies and all my support system was in the office. And actually I went to two different schools. So my first school I with diabetes was in sixth grade and then a little bit of seventh grade and then from seventh grade to high school I was in another school and both of them functioned this way where I would go to the office uh, for my diabetes stuff. So my mom would go in and talk to the staff about what diabetes was, what my needs were, um, what low blood sugar was, high blood sugar, glucagon, all that kind of stuff. And we would put bags together to keep in the office of extra supplies and extra snacks. So I would have one bag like packed full of snacks and then another bag with like, you know, syringes, extra insulin, test strips, lancets. Eventually when I was on the pump, pump sets, cartridges, all that kind of stuff. Anything I can need, ketone sticks. And that was all kept in the office. So when lunch would come around, I would walk to the office and I would check my blood sugar. This was once I was checking my own blood sugar. And at the time where I didn't have to give insulin at lunch, I would just write down my blood sugar um, on a sticky note, I think it was, and put it in my lunchbox to take home and then I would go to lunch. And if at any point during the day I felt low, I would go to the office to get a snack. So that was my mainly my first school, the sixth part of seventh grade school and how I did it. As I moved on to my next school, which was the rest of seventh grade and then eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, um, I got an insulin pump in eighth grade. And so at this point I was giving my own shots already before I got my pump and I was really self-sufficient, but I still remember I would go to the office to do all of that. So. Seventh grade, I would go to the office, my pens were all there because I was on insulin pens. I would dose up and I, I can't remember if we would have a staff member double check or not. I honestly don't remember, but I feel like we might have just because I was still young and we wanted to make sure I was doing okay. So we would write the amount of carbs that I was having on a sticky note probably, put it in my lunchbox, and then I would go and check my blood sugar, calculate out my dose, do it on my pen and get my shot. And obviously check my blood sugar before that and everything and write that down. And it was kind of funny because the place that we happened to keep all of my diabetes supplies was in like the teacher's lounge, which was like you walk in the administrative office, you turn left and there were some offices back there and then a the teacher's lounge. And so I would just like, it's lunchtime. Some of the teachers are eating their lunch in the lounge and I'm just like, <laughs> walking on in there, grabbing my needles. But as far as I would remember, I would just give my insulin shot right then and there and I don't know, I'm kind of proud of myself for being a younger kid willing to shoot up in front of people. Go me. So the one bad thing about this is I would always end up getting to lunch a little bit later than everyone else. I mean, eventually I got pretty quick at 
doing these things, but at first it was kind of annoying that I would get to the lunch line late. If I had hot lunch, I would never get the front of the line or I would just come to lunch a little bit after everyone else. But then again, you also don't want to leave class early to go because then you miss a little bit of class. And so anyway, that's just kind of how it worked for me. But then as time went on and I became more and more independent in my diabetes care, I stopped going to the office to check my blood sugar. I would just keep my meter in my backpack with me and check my blood sugar, give insulin through my pump, bada bing, bada boom, go about my day. And this was a lot quicker. It was a lot more independent. It probably made the administrative staff feel a little bit less responsible. Maybe, I don't know if they did or not. And it was just a lot quicker. Like I could get to lunch quicker. I could do that at the lunch table if I wanted to. And it was just a lot easier. But I think I would still keep like low snacks in the office, which doesn't really make sense to me. I guess because you're not really supposed to eat in class and that way I could like go to the office, eat in the office, not distract other kids and then come back. But I don't see why I didn't just keep low snacks in my backpack so I could just grab them during class. I feel like I must have done this when I got into high school because that just makes the most sense to me and I definitely did that in college. Everything was in my backpack and I would eat in the middle of class if I had to because medically that's what I had to do. But I wonder why I didn't just do this in high school. I must have. I'm not sure. It feels like forever ago. So that was kind of our process, kind of our system of how I went about diabetes care throughout my day. I guess part of the reason maybe I would go to the office for low snacks is just so there were some eyes on me, like some staff who could be there for me in case I needed help or in case like, you know, if worse came to worse, I like passed out or something. But the cool thing about this second school that I'm talking about, the part of seventh grade through high school, uh, was there was another diabetic kid that went there already and there was no diabetic kids at the school before that. So that was great because the teachers and the staff already had a foundation of what diabetes was. And so the mom of this kid had gone in, had a meeting with, this is a little private school, but still, all the teachers, all the staff as far as I know, and educated on diabetes, what it was, what your child's needs are during the day, and what to look out for in terms of like low blood sugar stuff, all that, and educated the staff. So they all had a baseline knowledge. They knew who her kid was, where his supplies were and what to look out for. So by the time that I came, everybody kind of already knew and so my mom definitely like talked to the administrative staff who were gonna be seeing me come in every day to check my blood sugar and give insulin and made sure they knew what was up. But she also, a lot of her work was already done, which was awesome. So yeah, I just remember at the beginning of every school year, my mom would have bags set with my name on it and emergency contact and all these phone numbers all over it just packed to the brim with supplies. We would walk into the office the first day together and be like, where do you want her diabetes supplies? And they'd show us where to put it. The cool thing about this too is that, I don't know, all the administrative staff were super friendly, happy, great people. And I just, I enjoyed walking in there every day and getting to say hi to them and stuff. So it was a little perk, I guess. And because I had come from this foundation of you know, having all my teachers know I had diabetes and knowing what to look out for and everything. When I got to college, I kind of contemplated like, should I be telling every single professor that I have diabetes or not? So one of my first classes, freshman year of college, I sat through class and I went to the teacher afterwards and I explained, I started to explain what diabetes was and that I had it obviously and what I might have to do in her class. And I realized the only thing that could potentially be disruptive was that I might have to eat in class. And so as I started telling her, I was like realizing as I'm talking, I'm like, she doesn't really need to know this. <laughs> like in college, it's so free and you're so independent that they don't really care if you eat in class as long as you're not being crazy disruptive. They don't really care if you leave in the middle of class to go to the bathroom. And obviously if I were to pass out or something, I wear a medical ID bracelet so they would know I'm diabetic and anyone would just call 911. Like it's not like I have to tell them, oh, if I pass out, call 911. Like, I don't know. So. After that, I realized, Danica, you're gonna have so many professors in college. You change classes so often. They have so many students, and I just felt for me personally, it wasn't necessary for every single professor to know. So at this point, I was so independent in my care. I had all my supplies, everything with me, and I decided that that is how I would go about it. But everyone's different. Some people end up getting special plans through their school to have more time on tests in case they go low or high, or some people in like, you know, elementary, middle school, high school have to have special plans just to carry their supplies with them and all of that. Uh, I feel like mine was a little bit of a different situation just because it was a private school and they could kind of 
work things out with me. So I personally don't really have any experience with those plans in school to get special accommodations, but I know that a lot of diabetics do go that route. So yeah, that is kind of what I did. I feel like now with the Dexcom, the CGM, the continuous glucose monitor, and Dexcom share and all that, it's gotta be so much easier, not easier, but it's gotta be so helpful for parents now sending their kids to school because they can see their blood sugars throughout the day on their phone, like if they have the Dexcom, and I think that is amazing. I think that really would have helped my mom out because I imagine she worried about me throughout the day and wondered what my blood sugar was doing and if my blood sugar was out of range, I would call her on the phone and be like, how much insulin should I give? Um, so she was definitely like my point person who would help me throughout the day and I feel like it would have been helpful for her to be able to see my blood sugars on her phone. But I know no matter how many tools you have, no matter how much information you have about your child's diabetes while they're at school, you're probably still gonna worry about them and that's just because, you know, they're not in your house. They're somewhere else, they're off on their own and you can't control everything they're doing and that's gotta be really stressful. So I would just encourage you to take a deep breath, to educate the adults, staff members at the school so that they have the most information possible about your child's disease and to just make sure that your child has all the supplies they need at school. At the end of the day, you have to trust that you have taught your kid what to do in diabetes situations and that they can always call you if they have any questions or need help. And ultimately we just have to learn to place our trust in God and know that he is always watching over us. So yeah, but I think being prepared and having a plan in place with the staff at your school will help you feel better about the whole thing. So I don't really know if this was helpful or not. This is just what I did. I know that my situation was a little bit different than a lot of other people's. So. If you went back to school this week or a couple weeks ago or you're going back in a week, I hope it goes super well. I hope you have a lot of fun and that you like your teachers and your classes and your friends are all there. And I just hope you guys have a great time and you learn a lot this year. Don't forget to take care of your diabetes along the way. All right, so that's everything, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I make new videos about diabetes all the time and leave a comment down below telling me if you went back to school recently and what grade you're in. Thanks guys, bye.